Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, good afternoon. This is Matej Heis from Solar Power Europe and welcome to this webinar on the Solar O&M Best Practices Mark, brought to you by Solar Power Europe and the Solar Trade Association. So, as said, my name is Matej Heis and I'm in charge of the O&M Task Force of Solar Power Europe. And um, in this webinar, uh, we will be showing to you how this um, certification, self-certification based label uh, to promote transparency and excellence in solar O&M works. And um, before starting, I would like to give you a short introduction on, um, on what Solar Power Europe is, what we are doing in the field of O&M, and um, how the um, O&M task force is uh, structured. And, uh, and so before doing so, I would also like to um, introduce the, today's speakers and guests, starting with uh, Paolo Chiantora, the chair of our O&M task force and managing director at Bewa RE in Italy. Operation Services, Vasilis uh, Papa Economu, a Managing Director of Electris, Alfredo Beggi, Head of Sales and uh, Asset Management at Stern Energy, and Robin Hirsch, Managing Director at Encom Energy Performance. So, uh, as a short background, so uh, Solar Power Europe launched our um, O and M task force in 2015, um, when a group of O and M uh, companies and also other stakeholders active in the field of of solar operation and maintenance came together and started discussing about the fact that um, there is some there are some discrep discrepancies in, in terms of um, service quality in the field of, of, of solar O&M, which has then been um, uh, substantiated by, by a survey that we con conducted a couple of years ago, um, that, that whose results you can see on, uh, on, your, on your screen, showing that on a scale of one, uh, to five, where one meaning uh, poor and five meaning excellent, excellence, um, co consistency of service quality only scored 2.3 in in the field of of, uh, of solar O and M, a relatively low score. And so this is the the, the problematic that Solar Power Europe's O and M task force uh, that was launched after this discussion is is uh, meant to to address, and uh, that Solar Power Europe's O and M task force is. Uh, flagship deliverable, the O&M best practices guidelines um, are meant um, to, to, to deal with. The O&M best practices guidelines is basically a collection of, uh, of the experience of, of, uh, of, of, of nearly a hundred leading experts in the field of solar O&M. Um, sharing the, their experience with the with the entire industry, and the, the guidelines are freely available on our website. Feel free to download them uh, to benefit from this report and to benefit from the experience of these leading experts and and companies. And so, uh, the best practices um, and standardization is um, is is something that is still at the core of um, of our O and M task force and our O and M task force's um, activities. Um, which you can see here, um, this this tree depicting the the structure and the various activities of the uh, of Solar Power Europe's O&M task force, um, starting with the O&M best practices guidelines, uh, version 3.0 of which is currently being in, uh, currently being developed uh, in the task force and uh, with a um, with a name to be launched at uh, at the uh, O&M and Asset Management conference on the 6th of, of December in in London. Um, we're also um, the O&M best practices mark which you can see on the the top right of, of the tree is something that we will be talking about today uh, a, a quality label based on the recommendations of the guidelines. Um, we're also um, developing jointly with the International Renewable Energy Agency and the Terawatt Initiative um, global O&M temp template contracts um, to, um, to, to streamline and, and standardize um, uh, solar project development and uh, and the project operation um, and thereby reduce um, costs and transaction costs and increase the return on investment and um, 
regular events in the O&M task force, but also open events such as the um, the O&M conference on the 6th of December and uh, and workshops and conference calls are also being held by, um, by the O&M task force. And finally, dissemination is also a very important aspect of what we're doing in this task force. Um, and we consider this webinar also uh, an important dissemination activity where we are trying to um, uh, to reach out to the industry uh, and uh, and disseminate the best practices and standards being developed in in the task force um, for the benefit of the industry of the solar industry. And so on this slide, you can see the members, the logos of the members of the solar of the solar O and M uh, of Solar Power Europe's O and M task force. As you can see, there are more than 60, uh, 60 members, um, all of them important and leading um, stakeholders um, in in the field of O and M, including O and M providers, but also other stakeholders interested in. Um, in, in, in solar o and such as monitoring solutions providers, uh, utilities, asset owners, investors, etc. And so um, here I would like to give the word to Paolo Chiantora, Chair of uh, Solar Power Europe's o and Task Force, who will be presenting the uh, o and best practices mark um, to us in, in detail. Paolo, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Mate. <clears throat> Thank you to all of you attending this webinar. As uh, Matte said, uh, I have the honor this year to chair this uh, very large community of uh, colleagues, uh, including competitors, uh, stakeholders of any kind that uh, are interested in, in uh, giving the, uh, the proper dignity and importance to the operation and maintenance in the uh, PV sector as it was probably not provided in the past. So, um, as you have seen in the previous slides, uh, this um, very well represented uh, team of people uh, is working since uh, almost three years now in uh, several streams of activities that has uh, uh, the, mm, uh, let's say, the, the, the uh, very important task to uh, uh, improve the quality of operation and maintenance of PV plants. As probably you all know, uh, and that is probably one of the reasons why you are attending this conference, solar power, solar energy will be the, you know, the source of energy for the future. So um, as long as we develop, build, uh, develop new technologies, et cetera, in solar, uh, at the same time, we have to uh, guarantee to these uh, uh, assets uh, um, the longest possible life and uh, the best uh, performance uh, during this lifetime. So this is the aim of the task force and the core activity are the best practice guidelines that, as Mate said, is, is a document freely available that everybody can download. Uh, and uh, uh, on which, as uh, Mate also said before, we are still working to develop uh, new and updated uh, versions. Um, out of the activities that the task force has been doing in these year, in these years, we um, found out at a certain point of time that uh, creating uh, a sort of certification, internal certification, what we have then called o and Best Practice Mark could uh, strongly support the activity of the task force and the contents of the best practice guidelines, uh, meaning that through a tool like that, we could have a, a very effective uh, dissemination tool. And in fact, as you can see in this slide, we think that this tool has the main purpose of creating more transparency in the market, incentivizing the o and uh, service providers to work always at their best uh, following best practices, but also helping asset owners and many other stakeholders interested in the o and in the solar sector, for example, the investors, the banks, etc., to take the right decisions uh, measuring the uh, technical partners providing the maintenance uh, based on excellence. So we uh, 
actually been thinking about how to develop a tool that was effective, um, uh, uh, transparent, and, and uh, let's say easy to do, although it is not as easy as it uh, could look like. As you certainly know, certification, there are many, many kinds of certification um, procedures and processes in, in all the sectors of our life. So uh, the most known, the, well, the most well known are the uh, ISO standards, for example, that are based on third party certifications. Uh, other certification, another very well known is the CE mark that you see in this slide. So uh, after a, a thorough analysis of certification methodologies uh, and, and uh, types, we decided to, uh, we, we uh, let's say, have been inspired by these two uh, kind of, uh, of certifications. One which is specific of our sector and the other which is very well known and broadly used throughout the European Union. The, the first one that you see here is the solar scorecard. That is a, a, a something that is uh, used in the United States to uh, provide a score uh, mainly uh, in the frame of sustainability, of um, health uh, and safety, worker rights, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, of module manufacturers. So this um, scoring is based on a number of requirements that each company producing uh, PV modules um, self-certificates based on a number of criteria um and and uh an external um body uh let's say corrects these numbers with the uh, uh, surveys uh, publicly available information etc and this uh creates a, a, a ranking which is a, a, a public of the uh, pv manufacturers module manufacturers uh with the uh, ranks from zero to a hundred Another, which, which is something that we took into consideration as uh, to inspire our, uh, our scoring method. The other was the CE, is the CE marking. CE marking is very common. Everybody has seen and knows the CE marks uh, uh, in so many um, tools, equipment, etc. that we uh, use every day. The CE marks uh, is based on uh, a self-certification. So if you want to affix the CE mark into a product, uh, uh, you as a manufacturer must uh, certify, self-certify that you fulfill a number of uh, safety, health, environmental requirements uh, um, provided by the European Union. And you have to demonstrate that by putting together a technical dossier that you keep available for third parties in case they want to, to audit your self-certification. So based on these several kind of different certification approaches, we uh, have developed the OMDM best practice mark. So this is the logo of the OMDM best practice mark which has been launched uh, uh, during the uh, last intersolar event in Munich. And so, which is something really brand new and uh, uh, which we are proud of for the reasons that we um, explained before. So let's see how, who is the mark for and then how it works. So uh, as said before, that there are two main categories of uh, stakeholders of the solar space that take advantage, that may take advantage of this mark. The first one, of course, is the uh, category of the OM contractors. So companies uh, that provide this kind of service in their country or worldwide. So what, what is the benefit for the OM contractor? First of all, is to demonstrate that you uh, perform in an excellent way and to demonstrate it properly uh, to your potential uh, or existing customers and clients. Also, the credibility uh, is another factor that uh, 
uh, of which the OM contractors may benefit because uh, through the technical dossier that we will um, describe later on, they can really demonstrate to their third parties or customers or clients that they fulfill uh, excellence uh, um, according to the best practice. And also visibility, because uh, which is something that we will see later on in this presentation also, because uh, the mark can be displayed uh, in your company website and email signatures, etc. And the company that have achieved the mark are listed in the solar maintenance mark uh, uh, com website which is a dedicated website for this specific certification on the other hand those who receive the service of operation and maintenance so mainly asset owners or through them the asset uh, uh, through the asset managers or the investment banks etc lenders uh, benefit from the mark uh, again for transparency so these parties can uh, are helped through the mark in uh, selecting uh, companies that uh, can provide the excellence uh, of the best practice uh, reliability uh, because uh, through the technical dossier for these pers for these companies it is possible to check the uh, uh, contractor's excellence uh, through the set of documents and as a final result to increase the service quality so uh, the asset owners the banks etc may uh, obtain better uh, performance uh, from their plans through the on them contractors that adopt the mark and uh, finally the best practices so Sorry. Okay. How does it work? The, um, to um, obtain the uh, best practice mark, mark an o &M contractor should follow a procedure that is uh, um, provided in the solarmaintenancemark.com website. So the first step of this procedure is the is a checklist. So. Uh, First of all, you have to check if you are eligible to get the mark. Similarly to what we have seen before uh, in the uh, solar scorecard, uh, the first step for us, for us as OEM provider, is to achieve at least 80 out of 100 points from a checklist. So how it works? How does it work? The checklist is downloadable. Uh, on the website and is something like this like what you see now on the screen and it includes uh, 42 best practices which is a sort of summary of all the best practices that are, are uh, described and listed in the in the uh, best practice guidelines mentioned before uh, collected into eight main chapters that once again correspond to the main uh, chapters of the best practice guidelines uh, for each of these chapters there are six to seven eight whatever um, uh, best practice uh, that uh, for which any company has to check by either uh, ticking uh, fully fulfilled partly fulfilled or not fulfilled if they actually fulfill in full or partly or do not fulfill that specific requirement just to give you an example um, the just to, 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 to tell you one uh, kind of requirement is for example specific training and certification of site technicians so which is um, uh, the uh, best practice b3 of the chapter B, which is personnel and training. So in, in this area of the, of the checklist, you find a description, an explanation on what it means. And in this case, for example, the, the explanation is the site technicians of the OM contractor, including subcontractors, if applicable, have the updated certifications to work safely according to the 
to the appointment provided and the local regulation, etc., etc., etc. And in the in the final column, you have uh, the um, list of documents that you have to prepare to demonstrate your the scoring that you put uh, that you out that you self certificate uh, um, uh, here. So again, for this uh, category, which is specific training and certification of site technicians, the document that you have to provide is the full set of certificates according to the local law and standards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, as said, we have 42 best practice. They have different weight, could be from one to four, the value of this, uh, uh, of each of these uh, practice. The total, if you have, if you fully fulfill all of them, is a hundred. Uh, of course, it is. It could be uh, reasonable. It, it is reasonable, and it is like that actually that you probably do not have a hundred, so all of them fully fulfilled. So we decided that the minimum scoring to get the mark is to have 80 at this point. So again, step one before registering to fill in the checklist and, and to see if you achieve or exceed 80. As said before, the um, the uh, checklist include the uh, detailed description of what kind of documents you need to prepare to demonstrate for each of these uh, uh, best practice uh, how you behave. So if you fully fulfill or partly fulfill. So you will find here uh, a proper guideline on all the documents uh, to fill what we call the technical dossier. So technical dossier will be um, folder uh, of documents um, based on the descriptions uh, that you find in the checklist. So at that point you may register your company uh, always using this website which is a portal dedicated to this activity. So registering means to provide all the company data and many other things. You can sign uh, the um, best practice declaration which is a declaration in which the company um, confirms that it acts according to the best practice and consider operation and maintenance a key segment etc 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 you can see it on the website and uh, and you can also have uh, available um, uh, toolkit for marketing we will see in the next slide the fee to get the certification for non-members of solar power europe is 800 euro while it is for free for the solar power europe members uh, as said uh, as said as you are registered you have also access to a number of instruments um, downloadable from this website one is the best practice declaration that you can see here which is something that you can put in your offices, wherever. Uh, a number of uh, um, marketing uh, graphic toolkits that may be used to promote your company as an excellent company because it's it has achieved the best practice mark. And of course, the best practice guidelines, which is something that, you know, anyway, is available to all, all the, uh, to everyone through the, also through Solar Power Euro website. Uh, and next, uh, the logo of the company will be um, published in this website. And what we expect now is that through this uh, uh, portal and through this certification, companies like us uh, receive queries from owners and vendors via the website. So it is an additional marketing tool. But this is something, uh, let's say, a consequence of the fact that the company like ourselves and all the companies that you that you see listed here that have already achieved the mark, actually uh, strive to perform at their best and do really uh, mark the uh, great efforts to to uh, to excellence uh, um, adopting the best practices. So uh, next is that we have also decided that since uh, things go on, things evolve, also our guidelines will be updated on a yearly basis. The best practice uh, 
mark should be updated every year so we will check uh, where the checklist needs to be updated and we will do it and every company will have to recheck if they uh, achieve 80 and can so confirm the uh, mark uh, also for the uh, for, for, for the for the following years so we already see the logos that will be available next year on in 2020 so we, we we our aim is to do it as a as a something to keep on improving our per hour I'm, I'm in this moment i'm uh, talking as, as as a managing director of an OM contractor but as the the the, the, the performance of the OM contractors so um, uh, quick summary of how the uh, mark works so the first point is to fill in the checklist uh, check if you're eligible or not then to prepare technical dossier uh, please note that this is not a very uh, easy and, and, and uh, uh, task and it's quite time consuming because uh, although companies like ourselves like the other uh, friends that are here uh, in the conference have all these documents but need to be prepared and put together to make them really uh, readily available to the, to whom it may concern then registering on the maintenance mark website uh, use the graphic toolkit uh, receive queries and update the document so these six steps are the steps that represent the solar the the way to use the mark uh, some examples um, as you see here, you see here some snapshots of uh, press releases. So companies like Greentech, Biva, Ari, Electris, Stern, etc., have uh, used the, the solar on them best practice mark as, as a commercial tool and made press releases as soon as they uh, uh, got the mark. Um, Email signatures is another way to, you know, to display the um, excellence of the uh, O&M best practice mark, as you can see in some examples in this page. Uh, websites. Uh, in the websites, of course, you can put reference to the um, uh, best practice mark, link to the best practice mark website, etc or social networks so twitter um, uh, linkedin and many of these um, social medias could be the, the the right way to announce to the market the achievement of this uh, excellence uh, mark um, company presentation here we have the company presentation of star energy as you can see together with all the uh, track record of the company uh, you can also display the fact that you have achieved the best practice mark so that's that's almost all from my side um, thank you for your attention I give the, the, the presentation back to, to Matteo thank you very much Thank you very much, Paolo, for for your for this very interesting uh, presentation about the O&M, uh, the Solar O&M Best Practices Mark, and uh, and so as a next step, we will hear um, short testimonials from three members of the uh, O&M Task Force, um, and after that, just uh, for the information of the participants, we will also have the possibility of of questions, and you can send us questions in the um, uh, the webinar panel. You will you will see a possibility. Uh, to to see uh, to send us written uh, written questions and and please do so and uh, I will read out your your questions loud for um, for Paolo and uh, the other guests um, to to be able to answer it and as I see we already have a question and that question is only related to the, the presentation and the slides and yes so the, the answer is that the the slides will be uh, available published on the solar power europe website and um, specifically on the operation and maintenance work stream page 
So um, please go back to our um, website in a couple of days' time and you will find all the slides, including uh, as well as um, the podcast of the presentations there. And so uh, now I would like um, to invite uh, Vasilis Papaikonomou, uh, Managing Director of Electris, uh, to give us his testimonial. Uh, Electris is a company uh, that has already been using um, the O&M best practices, Mark. And also after uh, Vasilis, we will hear a testimonial from Alfredo Beggi, Head of Sales and Asset Management, uh, Stern Energy, and Robin Hirschel, Managing Director, Ancom Performance, GmbH. Vasilis, please. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Mate. Um, welcome, everyone. A bit delayed to the webinar from my side. Um, it's been a very interesting presentation. Um, what I would like to, uh, you know, use two minutes to talk about is uh, our experience uh, getting the, the mark and how we, we got into this stage uh, as, as task force members. Um, because uh, we as a company and myself also, we have been from the very beginning. Uh, so as Paolo said about three years ago, it has been a, it is still a very interesting journey, but the best practices is a major milestone because we see all the input and all the efforts that were spent in the last three years sort of materialize and, and get a very uh, concrete uh, form. So the best practices are the way I see that apart from uh, promoting excellence uh, and, and uh, promoting also healthy competition, uh, one thing that I think uh, is not negligible is also it enhances the, the standardization of our industry. So everyone who has been involved in this industry for years, they would know there was always comparison, you know, what's the O&M price, for example, what is preventive maintenance, what is asset management and stuff like that. So I think with, um, with the best practices of all these checklists, we, um, the, the task force has actually managed to put uh, words in, uh, in everything that we've been discussing as an industry and make it more clear. And having said that, uh, then the, the internal rating or getting the best practices is based on a common standard across the industry. And I think that this is a major achievement. It's a milestone, it's not the end of the journey, uh, but I think it would have great benefits for all the stakeholders, whether these are service providers that try to um, keep up with the standards with the industry to, to increase the, the, the quality and standardize the quality. It's a great upside for uh, investors, for asset managers, um, to be talking the same language and gradually improve and, and put a common basis uh, of reference for the whole industry. So I think uh, the effort and, and what is very important, it's not a one or two or three companies effort from one side. It's basically is the result of the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, overall effort of various stakeholders coming from different directions from the industry. And this is what really puts a great value uh, in the effort overall and the best practices more specifically. I don't want to take too much of your time, Matt. I think uh, that we need to leave some, some room for questions later on. Yes, no, no worries, Vasily. Thank you very much uh, for your testimonial. I think it was uh, very useful and uh, you didn't surpass the, the time too much. Uh, Alfredo, um, please um, give us your testimonial. Alfredo, I'm not sure we can hear you. So in the meantime, until Alfredo is um, uh, joining back uh, the, into the call, um, I would suggest to move on to, to Robin. Uh, Robin here, sure, Managing Director of Encom Energy uh, Performance. W would you like to give us your testimony? Can you hear me? Yes, now, uh, sorry, so it's Alfredo again. Uh, hello. Hello, Alfredo. Yeah, yeah, uh, sorry. I, okay, so, so, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I will see you just uh, just a few minutes. I think that uh, Paolo and also Vasilis uh, um, provide us a very 
comprehensive picture of the world, the world thing. And um, I would like to stress uh, also on the on the point Vasilis was uh, stressing on too, because um, uh, I personally and Stern also found out that this is a, a way to standardize and to give a framework, a common framework to the market, uh, also uh, operationally speaking. Being myself uh, a phase manager, um, it happens to me uh, to 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 take the guidelines also in some uh, discussion or brainstorming with the potential client as a, as a framework on on uh, onto which start the discussion, uh, including in the as a vocabulary in some in some way regarding. Uh, some specific contractual obligation or definition of what is corrective or 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 what is ordinary maintenance. So to have a better and clearer view uh, of of the main items that uh, um, are included in a contract and then into a relation between a client and uh, and its provider. So uh, on top of the fact that the guide is 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 a, is a conceptual work very very strong and very uh, also time consuming for all the, the stakeholders and, and the guys that uh, uh, that uh, participate to the to the to this uh, ONM working group it is also a real uh, powerful tool uh, operationally speaking uh, when uh, when you liaise li li with uh, with, uh, with the stakeholder with the client with the provider and so on and so i think that these features of of the guidelines and together the mark as well is is, is one of that uh, that I appreciate the most and that uh, helped, helped me very much in, in my daily life and uh, in my operational activity. Thank you very much, Alfredo, uh, for this very useful summary from the point of view of, of your company. Um, and, and now I would like to invite uh, Robin Hirschel from Enco Manager Performance to, to give us his, um, his testimonial. Robin. Hello, yes, thank you and a very good afternoon to everybody on this webinar. Uh, most has been said before by uh, Paolo, Vasilis, uh, Alfredo, so I can just uh, support and stress that the very same arguments are certainly also the case for income energy performance. Um, in fact, we all know that we are struggling in our market and, and industry still with uh, the fact that we are very often, and, and our, our uh, business partners very often compare apples and oranges. And, and this is uh, one very important step in making sure that we are actually comparing apples and apples. And in fact, uh, what, what I can add is uh, some of you might ask themselves, why bother? And, and it's a nice thing and you can, you can and put uh, uh, some 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 logo on your on your web page or a signature but does anybody care and our experience is is absolutely yes uh, the the market cares it was in fact like 5 minutes after the press release the original press release from solar power europe uh, came out that uh, solar power europe is introducing uh, the onm best practice mark uh, that one of our top 3 clients wrote me an email uh, saying hi robin wouldn't this be something for income and i was very proud that i could answer immediately uh, yes indeed and uh, we do have uh, this uh, best practice mark as a company already. So uh, we see that that uh, asset owners and asset managers do care uh, about about these things. Uh, so so what we of course would hope and uh, one one uh, way of achieving this is certainly if, if the best practice mark is adopted even more broadly throughout the industry is that this can also act as, as some kind of of, of, of a shortcut uh, through a tender processes. We all know we have to basically collect the very same information for every individual uh, tender in, 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 in different ways. And, and so by just saying, if, if you have the best practice mark and the document suit that you have prepared for that, uh, then, then uh, this covers everything we need that would of course help uh, and, and help also establishing as, as uh, uh, Vasilis has put it, a healthy competition. Last but not least, one, one point that uh, I think hasn't been really mentioned, uh, besides all the external effect of the best practice mark, uh, I would also want to mention the internal effect. Uh, and and it, it is really very, very helpful also internally for us as a company 
to have a yearly review, uh, to have all our documents together to make sure that, that uh, uh, licenses have not expired, that, that authorizations are still in place to uh, make sure that we haven't missed on, on any uh, uh, legal changes that require some uh, adaptions to processes. So, so also the internal uh, uh, use of, of this very comprehensive and very uh, thought through list of, of uh, uh, competencies that need to be proven and shown uh, is, is something that, that should not be overlooked here. And uh, with this, uh, thank you for the invitation and heading back to Mate. Thank you very much, Robin, um, from Encom Energy Performance. Um, and so, with this, I think uh, we can we can already start uh, with the question uh, questions and and answers uh, session. And we've already received a number of questions. And and so so the first question that I would like to take relates to the internal effects uh, mentioned by by Robin. And specifically, the question um, reads as follows: Can you confirm? Um, if you need to reapply year on year to ensure you are still at the right level, a bit like uh, in the case of ISO, certifi ISO certifications. Um, and so I would like to give the opportunity uh, to, to Paolo to, to answer this question. Yeah, as, uh, thanks, Marte, and thanks for, uh, for the question. Um, yeah, as said before, um, we actually decided to make this yearly review of uh, the um, quality of our activities, I would say, following the yearly update of the uh, best practice guidelines, which is something that we are working on, on a yearly basis. So as said, uh, and also as Robin said before, this will also help us to constantly internally check uh, uh, how we follow the uh, um, guidelines and how we follow the improvement in the market. Um, we are quite excited uh, on how the new version 3 of the best practice guidelines will look like, considering all the new improvement ideas and contributions that we have been collecting during the last uh, weeks and months. Mate is working on, on this in these days and we will have a meeting of the task force group uh, next week to analyze all of them. And yeah, I think we, we all are aware that uh, improvement in our sector are needed and are possible, especially if we consider the um, support of the digital transformation that all the sectors, including our sector, is, is going through. So the answer is yes, we, we, we thought that it was um, um, needed and it was also useful to have a yearly review of, our, um, of the certification um, uh, based on these uh, um, updates and improvement that we will do on the, guide, on the best practices. Thank you, Paolo. I think um, this is clear, and indeed there will be annual updates. And and so uh, just to underline, uh, as mentioned by Paolo, the updates are done by the members of the O&M uh, task force, the Solar Power Europe, and um, we're happy to invite um, stakeholders and companies that would would like to be part of this process to join our task force and and uh, be part of this effort. And so the next question that I would like to take um, is um, what, how much it costs to be part of Solar Power Europe? And I think uh, I will I will take my this question myself, and I assume that um, that this relates to the the, the price tag of the O and M best practices mark, which is 800 euros for non-members of Solar Power Europe. And as for uh, the membership fees, um, well, we have a progressive fee structure uh, depending on the turnover of on the annual turnover of the of the company that wishes to 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 become member. And the, the lowest fee is uh, 1,500 euros, um, which uh, which shows that, as you can see, the membership is uh, um, has a higher 
price tag as the the, the mark itself so um, uh, you as a company should evaluate if you would only like to have the mark or would like to be a member be be part of this process of this initiative of the O&M task force and other initiatives of of solar power Europe or solar power Europe has a number of task forces not only covering O&M but also aspects uh, related to digitalization um, industry policy sustainability um, market design etc so um, so much to to this question and and the next question um, is uh, relates more uh, to geography and uh, and it is whether it is possible uh, f for companies not based in Europe um, to to get the mark Paolo well um, very interesting question because uh, we are actually in these days working on uh, uh, expanding and uh, our activities and collaborating with other associations outside Europe. Uh, there was an event in Mexico last week. May, I, I was not there. Maybe Mate can tell something about it. Uh, but yeah, in any case, we are not we are not you know close to any anybody uh, outside uh, outside the Europe. There's no 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 specific reason. Um, Mate, I don't know if you have yes. any more on that because it's more a poli on the policy side, but to yes, me, there's sure. no, no, no problem. Absolutely. So um, the answer to this question is yes. Um, well, depending on how the question is formulated, but the, uh, the answer is it is possible uh, for non-European companies to certify for the mark because there is no geographical limitation um, uh, on, on the mark or there are no... So we uh, we kept the, the geographical scope of the guidelines as well as the mark as open as, as possible. And, and of course, there are differences between uh, different legislations um, um, when, it, when it comes to expectations on um uh, on 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 how how to control uh, uh, power plants or or sa security safety or health uh, and safety regulations but but as as also uh, explicitly explained in the user's manual of the of the mark uh, which you will find in the excel document that is freely downloadable from from the website you always have to make sure that your answers and technical dossier corresponds to the respective uh, jurisdiction. So the answer is yes. Uh, the the mark is uh, geographically non-specific, uh, and uh, also non-European companies are more than welcome to uh, to to to, to self-certify um, uh, for the mark. And so the next question is also. Um, um, related to the applicability of the mark and this is also something that we had lengthy discussions about within the task force and so uh, this is a, uh, a company uh, the, the, the question comes from a company uh, uh, specializing in module cleaning and they say that they they are very much interested in uh, uh, in getting the mark however um, since they do not or do not currently cover um, all the aspects um, of O and M that uh, are listed in the mark in the in the requirements, uh, they they wouldn't be able to uh, to score uh, 80 or or more. Not because uh, they lack quality, but just because they do not cover all the aspects uh, that are required in in the mark's um, uh, specifications. So, um, uh, Paolo, what would be your take on on this question? Yeah, Matt, as you said, this is something that is not the first. It's not the first time that we've been asked uh, to 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 answer. I mean, it's uh, and it's clear enough that there are a lot of uh, what we call stakeholders of our sector that um, are willing, and we are very happy about that, to demonstrate also their um, excellence uh, through the uh, through through a sort of certification of. Um, best practices and and it's quite quite clear that companies like the one that you mentioned or for example monitoring uh, companies so we have uh, very active uh, members of the task force who uh, represent uh, monitoring companies um, uh, mathematically cannot reach a reasonable uh, uh, scoring because a lot of activities uh, are not uh, are not uh, you know in their scope so they cannot ful fulfill those requirements simply because they do not do those things 
So uh, this is something that we have on our table, uh, on, on our list of things to discuss and to to provide answers to the market in the next um, weeks and months. Um, definitely, we should find a way to to yeah to list also the excellent. Uh, companies in uh, uh, out of those that provide a portion of or parts which are anyway essential parts uh, to the O and M. So we don't have a um, uh, final answer right now, uh, a final decision taken yet. But yeah, we know that this is something that we have to work on. I don't know if other colleagues or your, yourself, Mate, wants to add something. But this is, uh, I think, this that what we've discussed right uh, up to now. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you, Paolo, and uh, and of course, uh, Vasily, um, Alfredo, and Robin. If you if you have anything to add on this question or on any of the other questions, then please feel free to uh, to, to to intervene. So, if if the question is if the the certification can be granted to someone that provides partial services, is that correct? How I understood that, Mate? Yes, that's so that's the question. In this case, it's a it's a company yeah. specializing on cleaning. Yeah, yeah. So so it's it's a matter of course of the task force to decide overall the strategy there. But I can tell you my personal opinion. Um, I think that would be good uh, because it doesn't really matter if you excel overall on something or you excel in something that you specialize. And also um, to, talking from the practical point of view. Um, if you are an O&M contractor and you want to choose subcontractors for doing part of your work, uh, you would probably prefer someone that already uh, has applied some best practices internally so that you keep your best practices marked uh, valid. So I think both from practical and industry strategy point of view, it would make uh, a lot of sense for me. But nonetheless, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something that the, the task force as a, as a as a whole, as a team, need to decide on that. Yes, thank you very much, Vasily. Uh, and indeed, um, the, the 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 rules of of the mark are uh, shaped by the O and M task force. And in the first edition, this fir first year, we we opted for the current configuration that the mark is meant for O and M companies uh, covering the entire O and M spectrum. Uh, but uh, one of the one of the things that we are looking forward to and planning to discuss within the task force uh, next year, early next year, for the 2019 edition of the mark is how to open it up for um, stakeholders. Um, specializing in specific segments such as monitoring, cleaning, etc. And so please feel free to contact me um, if you if you would like to contribute to this uh, to this effort and uh, and be part of, of Solar Power Europe and Solar Power Europe's O&M task force. And um, and so we have more questions. Um, and one question uh, specifically on the following. A company operates with local subsidiaries, entities, in several countries um, with not common processes and procedures in order to adapt lo uh, to local conditions. Has each subsidiary to be uh, certified separately in such, uh, such an occasion? I think um, Several uh, panelists today are in a similar situation uh, with multinational companies operating in several markets. So, um, how would you um, answer to this uh, this question, Paolo? Yeah, I'm exactly in that position. Is something that we um, uh, discussed internally. What we have done, uh, we have a, a certification for Biva RE. Uh, renewable energy, which is the business entity, uh, let, let, let's say the, the, the company of, of the group, uh, actually the business entity of operation services, I would say. And uh, in the technical dossier, we have organized different folders for different countries in all those um, sections where the local regulation or local, or local um, market requirements uh, needed to have different uh, uh, technical support to the certification. So one thing could be the um, health and safety rules, 
also in some cases uh, reporting, etc. So we do have different folders for each different uh, um, category of requirements, uh, distinguishing what we do or provide uh, according to excellence in Germany, in Italy, in France, in the UK, etc. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, this helped us also to uh, back to back to what Robin was saying before to look inside ourselves once again through this instrument very humbly and see where we can you know uh, let's say find the internal best practice among the different entities of the company so once again an, an additional benefit of the mark was uh, was this one thank you very much Paolo um... Robin, uh, Alfredo, Vasily, would you like to add anything on that? Uh, well, not uh, Robin here. Uh, thank you. Not 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 much to add. Uh, but but uh, also as as uh, Paolo has has mentioned, uh, this should be used as as uh, really uh, uh, pulling up the the the. the uh, processes in uh, subsidies that might not fulfill one or the other of uh, the points of the best practice mark to 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 standards uh, and and so we did it similarly uh, to Biwa. first and foremost uh, we we certified the uh, mother company here in Austria but but also made sure that that processes are rolled out to all subsidies Thank you, Robin. Maybe I think if I, if, if I can say Sorry, my opinion in just uh, one minute, Matt, I'm sorry, I apologize for interrupting. I think the best practices are meant for multiple companies. So I don't see any obstacle of having multiple subsidiaries in a company. I think it should be left out um, only to the company that certifies itself how they want to structure that. So if they have applied best practices across all subsidiaries, I think they can apply for a best practices mark globally. If they want to do this for a, for a subsidiary alone, uh, they can do so. I, I see that more like an ISO certification, a similar process where each entity needs to have the dossier. And if all, the, all subsidiaries have the dossier, then you can consider the, 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 the mother company, the group as, as certified or um, companies opting in for certification, they can pick specific subsidiaries. I don't think you should put any guidelines on that. Um, and, and that should be left to, to the actual companies who certify themselves on how they want to uh, certify. The, 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 the important part is um, whatever you declare is certified has met these basic requirements. Yes, and let me also add, Alfredo uh, speaking, that uh, sometimes uh, all the subsidiaries doesn't have, as you said, don't have all the all the activities uh, in 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 that country specific. Uh, I mean, there are some shared uh, business unit within uh, within a company. For example, a typical example is monitoring uh, the monitoring and the remote control of the plant. Uh, many times is shared. Uh, uh, between uh, between the mother company and the and the other subsidiary, so you can locate it in one place. For example, in Europe, uh, you can locate it in UK by and then uh, do the monitoring for for, for 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 more than one country, UK included, but also other countries in Europe. So I mean, mm, not all the time uh, one subsidiary is a self uh, an autonomous and standing uh, is a self standing operation and maintenance provider. So. There are also these kind of shared services within uh, the whole uh, the whole company. Thank you very much, Alfredo, and also thank you, Paolo, Vasili, and and Robin. And I think with that we've answered most of the questions related to the solar O and M best practices, Mark. And we've also um, reached the end of our time. Um, and so with that, I would just like uh, to highlight the upcoming O and M and asset management event, which will take place on the sixth of December in in London, co-organized by Solar Power Europe and uh, the Solar Trade Association. And one of the topics discussed at this event will be the solar o and best practices mark and we will also be launching the next version version 3.0 of the o and best practices uh, guidelines and uh, we would like to invite you all and and 
that you will find more information about the event on our website. And so if you have uh, any questions related to the um, O&M best practices, Mark, then please do not hesitate to contact me at my at the email address that you can see on this slide and you will also find my contacts on the solarpowereurope.org uh, website um, or please uh, I would like to invite you to, to visit um, the, the O&M best practices mark website solarmaintenancemark.com download the checklist for free and uh, test your company verify if you um, if you fulfill the requirements and if you do then adhere so uh, this is it from uh, from our side. Uh, thank you very much again uh, to Paolo and our three speakers. And uh, you will have the possibility to download this presentation from the Solar Power Europe website. Thank you very much and have a good rest of the day. Thank you.